I just had the opportunity to go mushroom hunting for the first time in Alaska with a friend of mine, Asia Balzan. She is actually a weaver and she has a company called Wool House and she makes these awesome wool rugs and she is also very knowledgeable of mushrooms, among other things, that grow here in Alaska. And so I got to tag along on a mushroom hunt for um, the first time ever in my life. And it was quite eventful. I really realized how nerve wracking it is to be out in the woods here in Alaska. Nothing quite gets your heart pumping like a walk in the woods in in the state of alaska we did have our bear spray and we were prepared but nonetheless you're you're still on hyper alert of your surroundings and not just for bear but for moose which we actually did stumble across a mama moose which was equally terrifying as a thought of stumbling across a bear but um, it made for quite an adventure and I hope you enjoy what you see and uh, learning a little bit about mushrooms like I did. Hawkwings, they're um, Sarcodon imbricantus, they're brown and they're, they kind of grow like this. Like this. <laughs> um, they kind of have these little scaly brown feathery things on top, which is why they're called hawkwings. They only grow under spruce, so they're going to be really tricky to find, and sometimes you don't see them until you're literally staring right at them. So hopefully we'll have some more. It's almost ready. You usually don't pick them until after you've had a good first frost. They sweeten up after that, and then you pick them and make them up into jellies. Do they stop smelling like a bear? No. <laughs> wow. You have to eat them. I mean, you have to use cook them. No. <laughs> Who knew that berries could stink? I mean, that is it smells like death. I disgusting. Know if they when I here. It does smell like animals. Wow. One of the things that I've had to kind of train myself in doing being here is actually looking up and out mm -hmm. and not at my feet. And now you're having to look at your feet. You're really right? Just keep your head on the swivel. So here's a mushroom. One little lonely one. Kind of blends in with the leaves. Wonder who built that? It's in the middle of the woods. Semi-eatable. How can it's it be semi-edible? So this one is called, it's an Alaskan scaber stalk. And you can identify it by the, the striations here. The spongy tubules back okay. there and the orange cap. Um, these can cause gastrointestinal upset in some people. Ooh. And the only way they can be rendered eatable is if you cook them really, really well. Okay. Usually you want to dehydrate them first and then add them to soups as like a thickener. Um, but just to saute them, eat them up on their own might cause you some problems. But this is pretty buggy. I'm going to put it back. Definitely don't want to eat that. You kind of want to find them about like oatmeal cookie size. What's the best season for mushroom hunting? Usually August. Okay. What we're looking for today, the sarcodons only um, come out at the end of August, beginning of September. So, so this is prime last, time for those. Yeah, that's the last, it's the very end of the mushrooming season. So okay. The last ones to come out. What is that? The leaf lichen. My friend Dawn is a dyer. And so you take this and you can dye, dye with it. Dye like protein fibers like silk or wool. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes you have to treat stuff like this, like soak it in ammonia or soda ash. I think this one you can just boil it straight up. She's the expert, but I know she's looking for this stuff, so. Oh, well, that's a great find. Yeah. She's teaching a mushroom dyeing workshop um, at the end of October. Huh. Of all the uses. 
Yeah, so with this stuff, you just don't want to denude the entire tree. Like, you want to leave stuff behind. Same so thing it with continues picking. to grow, yeah. Yeah, same with the mushroom pick. You don't want to denude it. I mean, this kind of stuff is super slow growing. And the last thing you want to do is destroy the entire organism. So don't be greedy. Right. Be respectful. Yeah, it doesn't make you look bad, but they're getting neat and bright orange or like dark orange. Oh, yeah. Perfect fall oh. colors. But we won't be picking those. <laughs> Just admiring beauty, right? <laughs> so we may have come up short, thank you, in the mushroom department, but wild raspberries are a good runner-up choice. Probably my favorite berry by far mm -hmm. in Alaska. Oh, I like salmon berries. I don't think I've had a salmon berry. Cloudberries? Oh my gosh, cloudberries are like, like mangoes and mm. apricots had a baby. <laughs> All right, we'll have to find some cloudberries. So we just encountered a mama moose and at least one baby. I might have gotten the mama on camera. I'll have to check the footage. But we uh, we didn't stay put when we saw that it was a mom with a baby. We slowly backed up and walked the other way and kind of went right back into the deep woods to yeah, just kind of walking to see if we could bypass her. And now we uh, we popped out of the road only to discover we went a little too high. So now we're back in the woods on our way back to the car. <laughs> it's been quite uh, an adventure for sure. Um, but hey, that's what living in Alaska is about, right? Baby. 